<laughs> when you grow up, you want to be as clever as Marcel. Well, you can start by not growing up, man. Wear your hat backwards. <laughs> I'm English. I wouldn't be seen dead with my hat backwards. Well, there's your first problem, man. Move to America. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I got a request for a transcription, a Molly Tuttle transcription from a cool dude named Mike. Mike sponsored this. I was just going to do this transcription for Mike, send it over like we normally do orders through the website, the Tap Store. But I thought this one would make a good video because this is actually a fiddle tune that I don't know. You guys get to watch me like totally flounder. <laughs> where are you tuning in from? Tell me where you are. Indiana. What's in Indiana, man? Back home again in Indiana. All right, here we go. Here's the video. Like I said, I don't even I don't, I don't even know this fiddle tune. So not only are we going to learn her version, but we're just going to learn the tune together. Um, yeah, D is the key for sure. Well done, guys. The, the very first thing that I hear, like I know the very first two notes are a hammer on. They sound like a hammer on. It sounds like a strong pick stroke and then the weaker sound of just like a finger pad coming down on a string. Um, and it sounds like it's part of the chord. So I wonder which string she's playing a hammer on on. You hear that? Just the very first two notes. I hear things fall down. I hear a slide. That tells me a lot about how the line is constructed. Uh, so there's kind of a syncopated thing here. This is kind of a, a fiddle player trick where you, instead of starting on beat one, you start right beforehand, and then beat one ends up being a rest, and it has this really cool syncopated feel that you hear a lot. It sounds like she goes down and she goes back up, and then this open B string is kind of confusing me. There's a slide here. This little move right here, where you're holding down the D chord and you hammer on to fourth fret. That happens in the uh, in the Lust with Marcel theme song. This is that same rhythmic thing that I'm talking about where nothing actually happens to beat one in this measure. It's actually just like tied over. So this in parentheses note just continues ringing. It's interesting stuff. No, it's, it's the same, you know, people always say like you can't play it if you can't sing it. It's the same with the transcription. I really want to know how that melody goes. So after what I have written here, the next part of it sounds like It has that kind of sound to it. Right. So there's, there's my next little portion that I'm going to write down. And if I can, I want to relate it back to the chord. So I know that she just switched to an A chord. She just hit this root note and it sounds like the chord changes. And it sounds like it starts on the root. So maybe something like that. Oh, hey, what's up, Travis? So if my calculations are correct, we're really close to the melody repeating. Yeah, there was it. So she 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 hit some other thing in there, but maybe let's write it cleanly just so we don't have to deal with that. Molly Tuttle is really good. She's incredible. She does play it really fast, and there actually is some things in this that um, that I kind of struggle with when I'm playing quickly that I'm not like great at. Maybe we'll talk about them in a second so you guys can see. This kind of phrasing sometimes is really difficult uh, to get out at a quick pace. 
part of me wants to to see if I got this open B string correct, but it's at the very beginning and it's just a black string. <laughs> Doesn't look like she is actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she is, which I think makes it easier to play faster because everything we got a lot of two four two four. Exciting developments. So more or less all of this is the same, and then she does a quick little drone right here. And then there's some little eighth note pickup. Bro, it looks perfect. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> uh, Justin, I can always count on you to let me know how things look. Also, why has no one told me that I have the wrong key signature? Huh? None of you care? None of you, none of you thought, hey, let's yell at Marcel for having the wrong key signature here? <laughs> Steve, you wrote a great comment on that, uh, on that fiddle tune video. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like, all right, boys, Nyan Cat in G, keep it peppy. <laughs> no, man, this is a fiddle tune. It's not one that Molly Tuttle wrote. It's actually by a guy named Mark uh, Sim Simos. I think is how you say his last name. Um, he's a Berkeley professor, if I remember correctly, or at least he was at some point. I don't know. I didn't go to Berkeley, you know. I suppose I still work in an office. It's just my office. It's the office in my house. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, you're already off. Steve's procrastinating. That's good, man. You're procrastinating like a boss. Just don't let your boss see this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Until you have to share your screen, you're cool. You're good. That's great. I love that you're all <laughs> you're all at work, working remotely while watching from Apex. Hey, what's up, man? Come over. Come knock on my door. We got through the A part. We feel okay about it. It was just a first pass, you know. But we're starting this B part, and I'm just trying to understand. It. Hey Germany, how you doing? Uh, microbes in the atmosphere. Tell me more about this. Tell me, tell me about the alien life. I'm ready. One day I hope to explore the cosmos. I hope to walk the astral plane like Tony Rice. This next line is kind of an interesting interval line. What a dumb mistake. <laughs> no one saw that. You got Dustin a baggie at 98%. Um, cocaine Blues at 99.9. .9. That's great, man. The, the speed is really tough. And you're you're exactly right. It's that last couple percent that are really, really difficult. Uh, there's no shame in my game. Um, there's definitely a couple, a couple of those videos that I've done where I play the tab through a couple times and I realize, hey, I can play this at 90%, 95%. I can play it at whatever percentage of the speed. And is it worth me spending, you know, a week or two weeks waiting to release the video so I can work up to speed and play this exactly like Billy Strings or Tony Rice or whatever at the original tempo? Most of the time the answer is no. Most of the time it's not, it's sadly just not worth my time. I'd rather just get the video out so people can start learning and you know, play it a hair slower. I really only listen to a lot of country and bluegrass. The other thing that I listen to is a lot of R&B and soul music. And <laughs> there's my dad, yeah. My dad did raise me on a lot of Zeppelin. Hi, mom and dad. The other thing that I listen to, Jim Croce, a lot of James Taylor. This is a really common drone move. A lot of you that play bluegrass have heard that before over E minor chords, C chords, that kind of stuff. You know, I, I always get a lot of crap for this too, so let's fix this. Um, I'm gonna do a, a tiny boy, as they say. <laughs> no one says that. I say that because that's also kind of what happens here. Yeah, you know, Molly Molly is doing a really progressive thing. She's doing a fusion crossover kind of style. And I, I, I don't know. I think it's a, a good move. I mean, there's a lot of bluegrass artists, actually a lot of female bluegrass artists specifically for whatever reason, I don't know why that is, that do really well with crossover. And uh, Billy Strings, I guess, is a great counter example. He's brought in a lot of jam band, rock and roll, other people into bluegrass. And that is so great. That's that's exactly what we want. In fact, you you wouldn't have me if stuff like that wasn't going on. Um, for the for the majority of this, she's been sticking pretty close to the melody. Um, and you can hear this in 
uh, there's another recording of her playing this with uh, with Tristan. And when her and Tristan play together, they're both just playing the melody together, and it's basically the same arrangement that she plays. He knows what's up. Big slide. <laughs> yeah. Also, right at about 11. I wanted one lower and I wrote one higher. What am I thinking? In all of the Molly Tuttle transcriptions that I've done, there's these little moments where she's kind of strumming, kind of picking, and it's somewhere like right in between. And it's, it's so difficult to, to pick those things apart if you want to do an accurate transcription. Hammering on the C sharp. Wait, let me check that. Oh, you're thinking about, thinking about this moment right here? <laughs> when you grow up, you want to be as clever as Marcel. Well, you can start by not growing up, man. Wear your hat backwards. <laughs> I'm English. I wouldn't be seen dead with my hat backwards. Well, there's your first problem, man. Move to America. <laughs> okay. This is such a cool move. This is called uh, floating right here. Um, if you've never seen this. She's using an open string in the middle of this up the neck passage. Generally, we think of that as floating. So there's a couple other places where she could have played the note. For instance, right here would have made the line very linear and all in the same sort of box. But using the open string means that she's sticking to her E string and B string, which is really, really clever. It's a smart move. But she can only do that because she knows that the open E string is the same as ninth fret on the G string. She just has that ingrained in her mind. At the beginning of the boxer. Maybe so. I, I can't pull that to to mind immediately. But it is the same as uh, 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 uh April come she will. However that part is actually played. I think there it is. Um, right? So in April comes she will, it, it's the, actually the same note. This open E string could be replaced with that. So maybe Paul Simon is just, uh, you know, into that. Maybe he's into that floating sound. But there's a counter example, same artist. I guess not counter example. There's a supporting example, same artist. This has actually been a, a super requested tune, just for anyone who, who's never seen it before. But this video has been popping off. It's almost at a million views, so I get why everyone's requesting it. But there's been a couple orders placed for it, and uh, I just didn't get around to it till now. This is what I was talking about a second ago, too, where there's a lot of these like little strums, and then there's a louder note, and the tab doesn't do a great job of showing emphasis, where like this is almost imperceptible, almost inaudible, but then this note is super loud and clear. Because we distract you too much. <laughs> no, you guys are distracted. You guys are good. <laughs> it sounded like all of this was the same to me a second ago when I listened to it. Then she does an arpeggio right here instead of this. Do I own any cutaways? Actually, the first Martin that I ever got was a gift from my parents, and it is a cutaway. It's one of the, the Mexico Martins, you know, DCX, whatever. And um, and I still have that. The back is separating from the sides. And uh, later on, I got a DC Aura, not the DC Aura GT, a DC Aura Custom. It's kind of a rare guitar. Um, right now, it's in a weird alternate tuning. It's in the, it's in the back over there. 
we did a bunch of this thing. We got our, our A part, a couple A parts over here. We got a couple B parts. The C part, I'm a little bit confused about the structure of it. Something's going on. Maybe there's just an extra measure here or something. So, somehow this connects back in just a couple seconds. We're super close. We're super close to the end of this thing. Um, unfortunately, it, it may be time for me to make my exit. Y'all have a great day. Remember, it is the, the five-year reunion of Lessons with Marcel. Actually, on the 17th specifically is when I started the YouTube channel five years ago. There's a bunch of new tabs. There's uh, a new shirt that's out. There's an article that my girlfriend wrote that's kind of a... Uh, memory lane nostalgia thing definitely check those things out thank you so much for hanging out and watching me transcribe this molly Tuttle video i'll see you guys later y'all have a great day